this one's over. Golden State lets another game get away. This one on the road to a very good team. The Minnesota Timberwolves come up with a win, 114-110. to 110. And the Wolves go to 49-22. and 22. Enjoy one of their most successful seasons ever. Golden State will fall back to two games above 500 with tough games upcoming in Miami and Orlando. They're 36 and 34 on the season and 18 and 15 on the road this year. It's time for Warriors Wrap Up. We'll bring you into the locker room and hear from Coach Kerr and the players. Highlights from the game, Warriors Wrap Up starts now. Yes, it does. Welcome in Warriors wrap up on 95-7 the game. Mark Randy with you after another rough Warriors loss. This time in Minnesota. Final score 114 to 110. The Warriors had this one. Uh they led for the vast majority of this basketball game, but they let it slip early in the fourth quarter, and then just not enough juice down the stretch. Uh, they fall to the Timberwolves again by a final score of 114-110. to 110. It's Warriors wrap-up on 95-7 the game. Again, Mark Grandy with you. I got a feeling like this, is, this, this might be a tough one to get through because uh, this was a very frustrating basketball game, and I want to hear from you guys uh, all evening long here on 95-7 the game. We're just getting started 888-957-9570. That's the number to call. It's also the Comcast Business text line. I've got our YouTube feed up as well. YouTube.com slash 957 the game. You can join the chat there. Everything we do on YouTube and, and Twitch as well at, at twitch.tv slash 957 the game. It's powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Now, this was a game where you felt like it was going to be a slugfest. It's the Timberwolves, the best defense in the NBA. You're going there on the road while the Warriors have actually been a better road team than a home team. They were going to have to gut this one out, and they did a pretty good job of that through three quarters. They were playing well defensively. Maybe some of it was Minnesota missing some shots. Uh, Nas Reed was the only reason they were not down by double figures in the first quarter. Then Anthony Edwards got going a little bit halfway through the second quarter, and he kept them in it at halftime. And then uh, the others began chipping in for Minnesota. Rudy Gobert had 17 points. Mike Conley had 14 points off the bench. Both Nikhil Alexander-Walker and Kyle Anderson were in double digits. A couple of big threes made by Monty Morris. Jordan McLaughlin made a big three. Then the others chipped in, but it was Nas Reed who is just a Warriors killer. I don't know what it is. Whenever he sees uh, Warriors on the uh, opposing jerseys, Golden State, he sees the bridge, whatever it is, he just catches fire. He was awesome in this game, specifically in the first half. He scored 20 points in total, 7 of 11 from the field, 6 of 8 from downtown, also had 12 rebounds. And then Anthony Edwards is special as well. He finished with a team-high 23 points for the Timberwolves. But let's start with... Uh, how the fourth quarter began, and I guess a little bit before the fourth quarter because I think this was the inflection point of this basketball game. So with four minutes and seven seconds left in the third quarter, the Golden State Warriors were leading 69-65. to 69-65 to 65 Warriors, 4.07 to go in the third quarter. Stephen Curry at a dead ball gets subbed out. Chris Paul comes in for him. And at that point, through three quarters, again, still with four minutes and seven seconds left in the third, but Steph would not play uh, the rest of that third quarter, he had 22 minutes and 57 seconds. Let's round up. 23 minutes for Stephen Curry through three quarters. He gets subbed out with 4.07 to go in that third quarter with the Warriors leading by 4.69 to 65. He did not check in until the 6 minute 54 second mark of the fourth quarter so add up five minutes and six seconds the first five minutes and six seconds of the fourth and the final four minutes and seven seconds of the third quarter that is a nine minute and 13 second stretch uh spanning the third and fourth quarters where steph curry's on the bench during that nine minute and 13 second stretch the warriors go from up 69 to 65 to down 97 to 89. The Warriors outscored by 12 points, 32 to 20, over those nine minutes and 13 seconds when Steph Curry is on the bench. I'm not usually a minutes guy. I'm not usually a rotations guy. I'm not usually a let's ride our star into the ground. 
But if Steph Curry, in a game like this, when you desperately need wins, hey, Warriors, you now have only a one-game lead over the Houston Rockets for the 10 seed in the West. You are in legitimate and real danger of falling out of the play-in tournament entirely. That's embarrassing. If your MVP, your best player, and I get that he's 36 years old, and I get that all of this is unfair to Stephen Curry specifically, but if the circumstances of tonight needing to win on the road against a really good team, playing well, you're in it, you're ahead going into the fourth quarter, you're ahead, Stephen Curry is controlling the flow of the game for the most part. In a game in which you lose, you were a plus six when he was on the floor. If the circumstances of tonight's game, trying to keep the Rockets at bay, trying to earn a really important win on the road, staying close to the Los Angeles Lakers for the nine seed. At this point, the nine seed's almost goodbye for the Warriors. It's the 10 or the 11. You're getting to that area. If tonight's circumstances are not enough to get Steph Curry 35 minutes, I don't know when it ever is. I don't know when it ever is. I know he's 36 years old. I get it. It's unfair to Stephen Curry, and and you can say, well, Chris Paul is out there. Klay Thompson's out there. Draymond Green's out there. The Warriors should be able to survive for a handful of minutes without Steph Curry on the floor. I'm with you. In a perfect world, that would be the case. In a perfect world, Steph Curry would never need to reach anywhere near 30 minutes. Yeah, you're playing great with Adam. All right, save him up. You know, don't overuse him when you don't need him. Well, guess what? Tonight you needed him really badly. In the 9 minutes and 13 seconds that Steph Curry did not play, spanning quarter 3 and quarter 4, the Warriors were outscored by 12 points. It went from a 4-point lead to an 8-point deficit. He subbed back in. The Warriors got back within 1. They got back within 1. They had the ball down 3 final seconds, a chance to tie. And they draw up a uh, back screen, a pin down screen by Steph to get Clay a look. Wasn't the best look. Clay misses. Rebounded by Minnesota. Ball game over. He brought you back into the game once he got down by eight and once he brought him into this ball game. Uh, but it was too little, too late. He needed another minute or two, at least maybe three, maybe four more minutes, maybe five more minutes, maybe play the whole fourth quarter. If tonight's circumstances is not enough to say, all right, Steph, we're going to we're gonna get 35 minutes from you tonight. Uh, we got tomorrow off. I know we're the beginning of a five-game road trip, and this is an important road trip. We don't want to kill all of your energy here on, on one night, but you know we, we might need 35 from you tonight. Tonight's the night. You got to do it. You're in this thing. This would be a huge win for your team to begin this five-game road trip where you've got a couple more really tough teams coming up. Minnesota tonight, a loss. Miami on Tuesday. Orlando on Wednesday. Those are three really tough games to begin a road trip. And this one could have been a win. And sure, there's other factors that we can talk about as hurting the Warriors. It was turnovers. And, and, and maybe the discussion about rotations and minutes and bringing someone in here instead of there, maybe that takes away from some of the issues that other players had. I thought Chris Paul had a very, very bad beginning to that fourth quarter. Uh, there was a turnover by Brandon Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis. They were trying to combine on a dribble handoff. It did not work, turned into a three. That was the first possession of the fourth quarter. Then Chris Paul, a wayward pass, looking for Brandon Pajemski. The Warriors committed three turnovers on their first six possessions in the fourth quarter, and it led to an immediate 8 nothing run for the T-Wolves, and it took a deficit for Minnesota and turned it into a lead. So I understand that there are other issues, and I'm, I'm not – saying solely that the the rotation decisions, the minutes, Stephen Curry not getting more minutes was the the sole reason the Warriors lost, but it was sure as hell one of them. There are other things. There's always other things. But, man, if, if your star, and I know he's 36 years old, and I know maybe he, he can't quite summon it the way that he has for the last decade plus, but if tonight, he can't get 34 minutes. 
I don't know when you ever can play him 34 minutes. He played 29 minutes and 51 seconds tonight. He scored 31 points in those nearly 30 total minutes. He was a plus six in a game you lost by four. I don't know. Sometimes it's it's simple. All right, we are going to hear from Steve Kerr. I'm sure he addressed the Steph Curry rotation decisions. We're going to get to that here in just a minute. But first, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, Oscar in Stockton wants to break uh, this down. Oscar, 888-957-9570. That's the number to call. Oscar, what's up? You're on a Warriors wrap-up on 95.7 The Game. Oh, man, I'm here having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Dude, this don't make, I'm, everything you just said is what I just said on my, on my podcast. This is don't make no sense. I'm watching this. Steph Curry, yeah, we know he's 36. But right now, it's playoff mode. LeBron James will be playing. Steve Curry got to stop this. He has to play him starting the fourth quarter. Like you said, we was up by four. You got to continue to start him because one thing about Minnesota and other teams, if you see, they keep a couple of their starters against our second unit. They don't just put their whole second unit out there. You know, and, and, and another thing, Draymond, I just watched Draymond. Defensively is where we're losing it at. Because we, 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 Nas Reed is a seven-footer. You have to make me put it on the ground. We're giving guys open set shots. And every team that we play this year has their career highs in three-point shooting because we are giving them open shots. And they just ask Green, Green, my Green, why are other teams getting open shots and we not? You know why? Because we are double teaming. There's two people who's going with the same man every time. I mean, this don't make no sense. And the rotation that we are starting with, it, that's what costs us the game. We in the scouting, we getting guys open threes. You got to run them off the three point line. And what you just said, I would definitely agree with. When is it going to be time to play Steph over thirty two minutes? And Clay, this is what the reason we losing Kaminga tonight. I see him on his face. The big guys in there, he couldn't get to the lane. He was getting frustrated. Arguing with the referees, took him out the game. Yeah, Wickers had fifteen points, but he's not going with power. You have to play different players. Moses Moody has to be in the game. He played two years ago. He's the guy giving us effort. And this year, the reason we're losing, one main reason is where we are babysitting Andrew Wiggins. Ever since you brought him back and took Moses Moody out the lineup and out the rotation, we've been losing. He don't give you effort plays, man. Until the, the Warriors start giving more effort on defense, one-on-one fighting over the screens, they, I mean, they go on the screen every time. We, we're not going to do anything. And I'm, 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 and like Draymond said right now, we're not looking back at Houston. You got to look at yourself. The Warriors are playing like this. Man, they're not going to win nothing. And I'm a diehard Warrior fan to the end. This is hurting my heart to go like this because this don't make no sense. I've been watching the game every game. Don't make no sense. We do the same thing. Steve Kerr has to start coaching better starting the fourth quarter, man. Curry has to be on the floor. I, I, I'm through, man. That's my whole weekend up, man. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> I appreciate the call, Oscar, and I I like I like your energy and your emotion. It, it shows that you care. Uh, to your point, uh, Minnesota made 21 threes today, uh, tied for a season high uh, for Minnesota in, in, in making threes. 21 for 40. They shot over 50 percent from downtown. Uh, you do that, you're not going to have much of a chance to win many basketball games against a team that does that. The fact that the Warriors were in it, and you can make a very serious and relatively simple case as to how the Warriors could have won is relatively remarkable. And it's not like the Warriors had an awesome shooting day. Uh, they made 14 threes, took 36 of them, 39% from deep. That's pretty good. Certainly not bad. You'll take that. Uh, you shoot just a tick under 45% from the field. Uh, you, you took care of the ball for the most part, 13 total turnovers, but as has kind of become the story of the Warriors, uh, in, in these kinds of losses, they were turnovers in really, really bad moments. Really bad moments. It happened to begin the fourth quarter. Uh, there was a failed dribble handoff between Trace Jackson Davis and Brandon Pajemski turned into a Nikhil Alexander Walker three to tie the game. Then Wiggins, he tried to drive, got the ball kind of poked away or blocked, whatever you want to call it, turned into a Monty Morris three. The three-point lead at the end of the third turned into a three-point deficit just like that. Uh, now, Pajemski did answer with a big three of his own, uh, but then there was the, the Chris Paul to Brandon Pajemski wayward pass, turned into a turnover again, led to a Mike Conley wide-open fast-break lay-in, and it pushed the lead up to four. 
for the Timberwolves, and suddenly you were just up by four a handful of minutes ago, up by three to begin the quarter. Now you're down by four. You call a timeout. You make a couple of changes. Uh, Kaminga and Draymond come in for Trace Jackson Davis and Brennan Pajemski. So you're running with Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan Kaminga, and Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, and then there was a, a bad Chris Paul moment. He dribble, 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 over dribbled in my opinion, gets into the paint, picks up his dribble, got a taller guy all over him, is forced to take a fadeaway, spinning, awkward shot from like 15 feet out. It gets blocked. And then what happens? He tries to go for a steal in transition. Chris Paul does. Instead of getting back, it leads to a wide open corner three. They make it. Suddenly it's a six point deficit. And all your momentum is gone. And target center is rocking. Uh, and they're feeling like it's it's been what the whole season has been for Minnesota, which is dominance on their home floor. The T Wolves now twenty five and nine at home this year. You give a team like that that has that sort of home court advantage and that kind of confidence, you give them those turnovers, those mistakes to begin a fourth quarter in a game in which you controlled the the, the flow of the game for a long portion of it. You let that happen. Uh, you're just asking for a major run against you, and that's what the T-Wolves did. And yes, we can blame Chris Paul for a mistake. We can say, Clay, that was not a smart shot. We can say, hey, uh, Trace Jackson Davis and Brandon Pajemski, uh, rookie mistakes, those are going to happen, got to be better in the future. But we can also say, Steph's got to get a handful more minutes. Steph... In a game like this, I'm not sure how you can't get him more minutes. And I know it's 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 incredibly unfair to ask Steph Curry to play 35 minutes a night. And really, it's not even 35. He didn't even get to 30 tonight. He played a tick under 30 minutes tonight. 29 minutes and 51 seconds. Three more minutes? Two more minutes? Is that going to change the final score of this game? It might. The Warriors outscored the Timberwolves by six points when Steph Curry was on the floor tonight. They lose by four. So that means when he was not playing, which was about, what, 18 minutes? Because he played 30. He did not play 18. Uh, In the 30 that he played, he outscored the T-Wolves by six. In the 18 that he doesn't, you get outscored by 10. Outscored by 10 in 18 minutes when Steph Curry is on the bench. Sometimes it's relatively simple. All right, uh, I want to hear what Steve Kerr had to say about this, so I'm going to play it for you here. Steve Kerr, post-game, I imagine one of the first questions he was asked was about rotations and about Stephen Curry. Uh, we're going to hear it. It's Steve Kerr, post-game, after the Warriors' loss in Minnesota, 114-110. to The Warriors now 36-34, and and they're only a game ahead of the Houston Rockets for the 10 seed in the West. They are in danger of falling out of the play-in tournament entirely. Here is Warriors head coach Steve Kerr. We're trying to keep him around 30, um, trying to get him as much rest as, as we can. Um, we've uh, played him a lot of minutes, played him 35 two days ago. So um, as long as we were hanging in there, then, then uh, we wanted to, to limit the minutes a little bit. Not limit them, but not over overplay him. There was kind of that stretch in the fourth where you took time out with like nine minutes left. Mm-hmm. I think you were down four. It looked like you might go back to Steph, didn't, and then it was eight, and you did go back. Do you feel like that was the deciding, but one of the deciding stretches? No. no. We got Chris Paul out there. We got Clay. We got Draymond. We got we got great players out there. So um, it's uh, you know you, we can't expect to to just ride Steph um, game after game after game. You, you know, these last few weeks have been really tough on him. We've, we've, we've put the burden of this franchise on his shoulders for <laughs> 15 years. Um, we can't expect him to play 35 minutes. we got five games in seven days on this road trip. So, um, if you want to say that him playing 30 minutes instead of 32 was the difference in the win and the loss, I, I totally disagree with that. And we're trying to we're trying to win the game. We're trying to uh, to keep him fresh, too. Well, uh, you went away from Jonathan for the last, I think, 2.30 as well. Why'd you sit him down the stretch? I uh, just went with Wiggs. Um, you know, we, there was no, you know, nothing that Jonathan did wrong. Just, um, you know, we just felt like Wiggs' experience was important. Overall, in the fourth, I mean, that's when the Wolves really made that, that run, yeah. even though you were hanging there. Just what did you see specifically in that period? Well, they played great. They, you know, they got, they scored 36 points. Um, 
in the quarter, uh, the beginning of the quarter, we, we turned it over on the first play, which uh, was tough. I think um, Alexander Walker made a couple of threes. Those were big shots that, that swung the game. And, um, you know, all in all, um, you give them credit. They made 21 out of 43s. You know, they shot the lights out. Um, I love the way our guys competed. They played uh, for 48 minutes. They played hard and, and together and, um, you know, gave us a, a chance to win. We just couldn't couldn't pull it off. We've talked a lot about, you know, urgency and playing with effort recently. Would you say that tonight was a step in the right direction yeah, in that yeah. sense? Great, great effort, great urgency. Um, you know, took it to them right away, forced a bunch of turnovers, um, got on the floor for loose balls. I loved, loved the effort. That's Steve Kerr, post game in Minnesota tonight after the Warriors fall to the T Wolves, 114 to 110. <sighs> okay. So. In, in case you missed how this game played out. So the Warriors were not in control, but they led for the vast majority of this basketball game, right? And maybe it is a little narrow-minded to, to, to make the, the Curry substitution patterns a singular focus. And I think you guys gotten to know me enough by now. If you're a regular listener here to Warriors wrap-up on 95.7 The Game, you know how... How careful I am when it comes to to questioning decisions made by coaches of, of really any team, but especially a coach of Steve Kerr's stature, considering all the success that he's had, all the championships that he's won, and there's absolutely no doubt in my mind or anybody's mind that Steve Kerr has forgotten more about the game of basketball than I will ever know. Like, he is untouchable, unimpeachable. So... When it gets to situations like this where I I disagree, I think it it means a little bit more because I'm not a guy who's going to come on here every single night and question every little decision that Steve Kerr makes. And and maybe there's some extra knowledge and information that Steve Kerr has that is not public that is influencing decisions. Like perhaps Steph is fighting through, uh, you know, something physically that we don't know about. Maybe the 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 ankle the, the the ankle sprain that he suffered a couple of weeks ago in that loss to the Bulls. Maybe it's still really hampering him, and maybe that is the baseline of all these decisions. But all I will say is, if there's nothing like that going on, if Steph is fine physically, and maybe he's tired, maybe he's fatigued. I don't know how he can't get three, four more minutes in a game like this. You just heard Steve Kerr. He said, we're trying to win this game, but we're trying to keep him fresh too. What are you trying to keep him fresh for? You have 12 games left in the regular season. You are in danger of falling out of the race for the nine seed in the Western Conference. If the Lakers win tonight, their game just tipped off a little bit ago down in L.A. against the Pacers. If the Lakers win tonight, you will be two full games behind them. As of right now, you are only one game ahead of the Houston Rockets for 10th place in the West. If things don't break your way, you will not even be in the play-in tournament. You will be... Not one of the 10 best teams in the Western Conference? And you've got 12 games left to prove that? What are you trying to keep Steph Curry fresh for? If tonight is not the night to let it loose, let it rip just a little bit more than normal, I don't know when is. I do not know when is. And I get maybe if you feel like, all right, this is a, a tough beginning to a road trip. Maybe you felt like this was going to be a loss anyway. You want to make sure you can beat Charlotte, beat San Antonio, win one of Miami and Orlando, make this a 3-2 and two road trip, uh, and then you'll go from there. So maybe you felt like this was an L to begin with. But it was right there for the taking. Adjust your plan on the fly, right? You're up by four points with four minutes and seven seconds left in the third quarter. Chris Paul checks in for Steph Curry. Absolutely no issue with that, right? It's it's kind of the normal ro rotation pattern. 
And the Warriors only lose those final four minutes and seven seconds by one point with Seth Curry on the bench. The final 407 of the third quarter, they get outscored by just one. A four point lead turns into a three point lead going into the fourth quarter. Okay, great. You survived four plus minutes without Steph Curry and only got outscored by one. That is fantastic news. A three point lead. I even agree with Steve Kerr. Okay, don't bring Steph Curry in to begin the fourth. That makes sense to me. You're up by three. Let's play the score here just a little bit. But guess what happens to begin the fourth quarter? A failed dribble handoff between Trace Jackson Davis and Brandon Pajamski turns into a Monty Morris three. Tie ball game. Tie ball game. Then Andrew Wiggins tries to drive, gets it either poked away or blocked. I'm not sure exactly uh, how the NBA officially scored that one. Uh, and then what happened? Oh, pardon me. The first one actually was a Nikhil Alexander Walker three to tie the game. And then that Wiggins drive block slash steal turned into a Monty Morris three. So suddenly the three point lead is a three point deficit. And Steph Curry and Anthony Edwards are on the bench at that point. Uh, then a little bit later, you're down by two. Uh, Chris Paul. Uh, tries to find Brennan Pajemski along the right wing. Maybe some miscommunication between the two, but a wayward pass by Chris Paul turns into a Mike Conley easy steal and a transition layup. You're down by four. So the three-point lead is suddenly a four-point deficit. Uh, you get out in that fourth quarter, and Minnesota immediately goes on a 12-5 to run over the first three minutes and four seconds of the fourth quarter. Steve Kerr calls timeout, as he should. Great decision, Steve. I agree with you 100% there. And you come out of the timeout with 8 minutes and 55 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Steph Curry having played 23 minutes up to that point. About 9 minutes left. So say you bring Steph in and he plays the final 9 minutes of regulation. He'd finish with 32 minutes. At that point, the Warriors decide to bring in Jonathan Kaminga and Draymond Green for Trace Jackson Davis and Brandon Pajemski. That sets up a five-man group of Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan Kaminga, and Draymond Green. That was the moment to bring in Steph Curry. What happens then out of that break, out of that timeout? Another run for Minnesota, a 7-3 to three advantage. Add those two runs up. It's a 19-8 to eight run over the first five minutes and six seconds of the fourth quarter for Minnesota. A three-point deficit, pardon me, a three-point lead turns into an eight-point deficit. And then Steph Curry comes in, and he wills you back within one. You're down by three in the final seconds. A chance to tie in force overtime. Shot misses by Clay. Ball game over. If you brought Steph Curry in at the nine-minute mark instead of the seven-minute mark, Maybe you win this basketball game. We'll never know. 888-957-9570. That's the number to call. It's also the Comcast Business Text Line. We're going to take a quick break, though, here on Warriors Wrap Up on 95.7 The Game. It's Mark Randy with you. I see the phone lines lighten up. Hang out on hold or give us a call. 888-957-9570. We're coming back, and we will hear from all you guys. Also, Steph Curry has addressed the media post game. We'll hear that as well. As Warriors wrap-up continues, the T-Wolves beat the Warriors 114-110, to and the Warriors in danger now in the Western Conference standings. More next on 95.7 The Game.
And the rebound pulled away. Oh, my goodness. Your GP2 won't have a better look all year. Now back to Warriors Wrap-Up on 95.7 The Game. Welcome back. Mark Randy with you as the Warriors fall to the T-Wolves. Final score 114-110. to 110. A disappointing, a frustrating Warriors loss tonight. They're now 36-34. and 34. And as we take a look at the updated Western Conference standings to the minute, uh, there is still a game of importance going on. The only game in the NBA still going on. Near the end of the first quarter in L.A., the Pacers lead the Lakers 28-23. to So with that in the back of our minds, let's take a look at the Western Conference standings. Uh, the Warriors are two full games behind the Lakers as we speak right now. Uh, if the Lakers were to come back and win, the Warriors would be two and a half behind them at the end of the night. If the Lakers fall to the Pacers, the Warriors would be a game and a half behind. What we know for a fact will be true at the end of tonight. The Rockets will only be one game behind the Warriors for 10th place in the Western Conference. As we talked about Friday evening, though, and it still is true now, the Warriors have the tiebreaker over Houston, and there is nothing that can happen the rest of the regular season that changes that. Uh, the Warriors have won both matchups against Houston this year, and they play just one more time. So the Warriors will have the tiebreaker over Houston, which means if Houston is one game better than the Warriors the rest of the way, uh, 12 more games left for each of those two teams. If the teams uh, are separated by one game the rest of the way, if Houston is one game better than the Warriors in the final 12, say they're 7-5 and five and the Warriors are 6-6 six and six and they finish tied, uh, the Warriors will be the 10th seed. However, if the Houston Rockets are two games better than the Warriors over the final 12, Houston is your 10, and the Warriors will be out of the play-in tournament entirely. They will be officially the fifth-worst team in the Western Conference uh, at the end of the regular season if that is how it does play out, which is part of why, uh, with part of what makes this game tonight so important and, as it ended in a loss, so frustrating. If the Warriors found a way to win this basketball game, they would be two games clear of the Houston Rockets. And if the Lakers were to fall, they would only be a half game behind the Lakers. Tonight, uh, a big swing. A big swing, not in the Warriors' favor as they fall in Minnesota. Final score, 114-110. to 110. All right, it's Warriors wrap-up on 95-7 the game. Mark Randy with you, talking a lot about rotations and Steph Curry's minutes. I think that is a, a, a big conversation here tonight. And again, you guys know me. I'm not one to question every single decision that Steve Kerr makes. I think I'm relatively uh, on on one extreme of, of this spectrum when it comes to the Steve Kerr conversation. I generally, generally speaking, very much defer to the decisions that he makes. Tonight, I, I disagree wholeheartedly. Uh, with specifically Steph Curry's minutes. Now, could the Warriors have won this game even with the Steph Curry rotations tonight as they were? Yes, of course. I just pointed to a number of the issues that happened at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Bad turnover, a combination of Trace Jackson Davis and Brandon Pajemski. There was Andrew Wiggins driving into the paint, got clamped up, tried to shoot, wild shot, got blocked, got poked away, stolen or blocked, whatever it was called at the turnover, and it re- both of those resulted in big threes. Uh, Chris Paul over-dribbling, over-dribbling, getting his shot blocked, leading to a bucket. Chris Paul, bad pass to Pajemski, a turnover, leading to a Chris or a, a Mike Conley bucket. Uh, those things have nothing to do with Stephen Curry. I guess only in the sense that he wasn't on the floor for them, but those issues and those mistakes, you know, deserve some discussion as well. And part of the reason why I think, and I I have a lot of Warrior fans hitting me up on the Comcast business text line, 888-957-9570. It's also the number to call. And Al, hold on, we're coming to you in just a minute. I see it as well on the YouTube chat powered by First NorCal Credit Union. A lot of Warrior fans frustrated with Steve Kerr tonight. And the issues of all the veterans is part of what makes this Steph Curry rotations conversation so interesting to me. Or it adds more fuel to the fire. It would be one thing if Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins and Chris Paul who all were on the floor to begin the fourth quarter. Those three, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, along with your two rookies, Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis. Those five are on the floor. 
But let's focus on those three veterans, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins. It would be one thing if those three had just been killers all season long and they earned the right for you to trust them in moments like that. And I know you really have no decision. You don't have any other choice to make. You're almost stuck with, you're forced into trusting them because you don't have better options elsewhere. It's one thing if those three had proven time and time and time again, solid all year long, didn't have all these issues, inconsistencies, frustrations, emotional outbursts, all that sort of stuff. If they did not have that, okay, yeah, Steve, I'm with you. Trust the guys that have been playing well all season long and they can hold the fort down. But that's not been the case. And part of the reason why the burden has grown on Steph and it's totally unfair to him, but part of the reason why you need to lean on Steph a little bit more, even though he's 36 and still otherworldly, although he has not shot the ball as well as he usually does. Part of that is because he sets such a high standard for himself and he has been struggling a bit by his standards recently. But part of the reason why we feel like I feel like a number of Warrior fans I've already talked to you tonight feel like there was more for Steph to give tonight. It's because of the expectation and the play from the others. Like, it's an opportunity cost here. It's not just what are you not getting by not playing Stephen Curry. It's what are you getting from the guys you are playing in replacing Stephen Curry on the court. And it's it's a double whammy. You are missing out on Steph, and you're getting a handful of guys who, together as a unit, Chris Paul, Brandon Pajemski, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Trace Jackson Davis, they haven't really done a ton together. For you to be extremely confident that things are going to go well with that group. Ideally, that group would be proven, and they'd be holding on to the lead, maybe even adding a point or two onto the lead. I mean, Anthony Edwards is out of the game on the other side as well. Keep that a three-point lead. That's what it was to begin the third. Instead, it's an immediate 12-5 to run for Minnesota out of the break. A timeout, a couple of subs, Draymond and Kaminga in. Good subs, but not the one that's going to make the biggest difference. And then another 7-3 to run, then another timeout, and then... Steph Curry comes in, Warriors down eight with seven minutes left. He gets them back within one, along with the help of others. Clay hit a big three, but it was Steph driving the bus offensively. You get back within three uh, in the final seconds of the game. Clay Thompson misses a three. Minnesota gets the rebound, ball game over. I felt that last substitution came a hair too late. All right, 888-957-9570. Uh, up next is Al in Alameda. Al, what's up? You're on 95.7 The Game. It's Mark Randy with you. How you doing tonight? Good evening, Mark. Thank you for taking my call. Um, yes, you hit you hit the button there. It's all about Kerry's time there. Uh, he's playing time, okay? I remember he used to play like a whole quarter, then he wouldn't come back in until like um, six minutes left in a second quarter. Now it's like he comes out like in four minutes left and – First quarter, then he comes back six minutes again. Second quarter, what is up with that? I mean, they're 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 like they're taking a chance of you losing like good six, eight, ten points there from him from his playing time. Okay, and and second of all, also we got too many guards there. I see like the three. You got Chris Paul at the same time, Gary Payton, Budzinski. That's a small lineup. Okay, that's very small lineup. God. Uh, and bottom line too is we need a big man. We don't do it this year. I, I mean, we ain't gonna, we're not going to do it this year. I'll be honest with you. We we're just hoping that they could survive. Um, here's Houston breathing on our back here. Okay, next year we will get a big man somehow. Okay, and like I said, Kerry's time. That's the, that's a big point tonight. I'm calling about. And and Pertinsky, uh he's he's not really a skill type. He's very athletic, aggressive. Sometimes he's happy go lucky. Uh, he's just not that person. We're happy to have him. Bottom line, he's not the type. Okay, thank you for taking my call. Yep, yeah, thanks, Al. Appreciate it. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. That's the number to call. It's also the Comcast Business text line. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. 
checking out the Comcast Business text line. The 907 says the Warriors can still clinch the 9 seed. Uh, yes, you are correct. They are two games back right now. Lakers are currently in action. As I get an updated score for you from L.A., it's a four-point Pacers lead early in the second quarter. Uh, if the Lakers are to come back and win, they would lead by two and a half games. If they lose, it would be a one and a half game uh, lead for the Lakers over the Warriors. They still play one more time. So certainly it's still on the table. But if the Lakers win a two and a half game deficit with 12 games left, I, that's that's not easy to do. You got to play well and the Lakers have to string a couple of losses together. Uh, it's getting to the point where unless the Warriors play really good basketball the rest of the year, maybe they get some help tonight from the Pacers and the Lakers lose. Uh, but if the Lakers win tonight and you're two and a half back with uh, 12 games left, you're going to need help to get to the nine seed. Falling out of the postseason entirely, falling out of the plane, the Rockets catching you is getting closer to being more likely than catching the Lakers. That's just the fact of the matter. Um, I think something that's interesting as well, and we are going to hear from Steph Curry. I'm sure he was asked about his rotations and his minutes tonight. Steph Curry tonight. Steph Curry tonight played 20. Let's see, where is he? Steph Curry tonight played 29 minutes and 51 seconds. This season, Steph Curry had played that same number of minutes or less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times this year. Steph Curry had played the number of minutes he played tonight, 29 minutes and 51 seconds, only nine times all season. And let's work through each and every single one of these. He played the exact number of minutes and seconds all the way back on the 7th of January, 29 minutes and 51 seconds. That was the blowout loss at home to Toronto. You know why he played so few minutes in that game? Because the game was over at halftime. Up next, Steph Curry played 29 minutes and 38 seconds last month in Washington, an 11-point win. Not quite a blowout, but if you remember, the Warriors were up by 20 in the third, and then the Wizards put a little bit of a run together in the fourth, but it was never in doubt. He only played 29 minutes and 38 seconds in that game because the Warriors were up by so much, and the game was over. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the loss to the Bulls at home, a three-point loss. Remember, a really close game. Steph was in that the whole way, right? He played 28 and 42, but you remember why? Because he got hurt and he missed the last handful of minutes. Otherwise, he would have been around 32, 33 total minutes in that one. Uh, he played 27 minutes and 42 seconds in a loss in Phoenix in November. That was an eight-point loss. It was the weird one where the Warriors bench unit was playing so great that the Warriors decided, uh, you know what, we're actually going to bench our starters and we're going to play the bench group, the normal starters minutes. That's why Steph didn't play that many minutes in that one. Another Washington win where they won by 11. Steph played a tick under 27 minutes in that game. Similar story as the other one. They had a big lead, uh, and then they didn't really need to ride the starters in the fourth quarter. Uh, 25 minutes and 11 seconds at home against the Pelicans in early January. They lost that game by 36 that's why Steph didn't play in that one. Uh, what about the win in Philadelphia on the road? They won by 23. Remember, Steph did not play 25 minutes in that game because the game was over in the fourth quarter. What about the Memphis win just uh, four days ago? The Warriors won by 21 points. You don't need to ride Steph in the fourth in that game. Uh, and then the only other instance where Steph played the same or fewer minutes as he did tonight was the 52-point loss in Boston when he did not play the whole second half. I know that was a lot. I only go through every single one of those instances to show you the unique circumstances in the games where Steph Curry does not reach the 30-minute plateau. It was either blowouts, it was either an injury, or it was really poor play by the starters and great play by the bench that Steve Kerr decided, you know what, Steph, Clay, Dre, Andrew, we're going to ride with the youngsters, and they're helping us more than you are tonight. Those are the only instances where Steph Curry had played fewer minutes than he did tonight. And what was the importance of tonight? Trying to keep the Rockets at bay. Winning a game against one of the best teams in the league on the road, and you were up by three going into the fourth quarter. Why is Steph not getting 30-plus minutes tonight? I can't make sense of it. It does not fit the pattern that they have followed 
all season long. All season long. And it makes no sense to me. 888-957-9570. That's the number to call. It's also the Comcast Business text line. Up next is Connor in Dublin. Connor wants to react to tonight's Warriors loss. Connor, what's up? You're on with Mark Randy here on 95.7 The Game. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I hear you. What's up? Awesome. Uh, so this one, this one was a, uh, this one was hard. Uh, this one was painful to watch, in the sense that, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was watching, I don't think I noticed the Timberwolves get a lead on the Warriors at all in the first two uh, quarters. Am I wrong? Uh, they might have had a lead here or there for for a moment, Maybe, but, yeah, but you're right. It, it was really the, the Warriors led this game for basically the whole yeah. first three quarters. And 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 so I feel like maybe they might have ran out of gas. That could have been uh, a possibility. And and just watching how they 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 dominated, I thought this. I thought they had this game, and and then watch it slip away. And this is just another one of those clutch games we always see uh, when the Warriors seem to dominate, and then suddenly the other team just is like, we're done, and they come back. And then the Warriors find themselves in a clutch moment, and they can't deliver. And I feel like I see that a lot, but that's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Connor. Uh, this was clutch game number 41 for the Warriors this year, by the way. Uh, let's see. The Warriors are now 19 and 22 in clutch games. And if you don't know what clutch games are defined by, uh, games in the final five minutes where you're within five points. The margin is within five points. Uh, this was the 41st such game this year. The Warriors are now 19 and 22 in those 41 clutch games. And that's part of what makes this season so frustrating because if just five of those 22 clutch game losses went your way, just a swing of five total games, the Warriors, instead of being 36 and 34, would be 41 and 29. You're 41 and 29. You are tied with the Kings and Mavericks for seven, and you're a half game behind the Suns for sixth. That's what makes this so frustrating because time and time and time again, this Warrior team has lost in the margins, and it's cost them a legitimate chance to do something. I mean, if you're the sixth seed, it's where the Warriors were last year. If you're the sixth seed, maybe you get the Timberwolves in the first round. Maybe the T-Wolves don't have Cat as they did not tonight. You're the sixth seed. You can make a run at this thing. The Suns are currently the six. Who are you picking? Suns versus T-Wolves. If that series started now, I might be taking the Suns. Like, that is a gigantic jump. And the only thing that's keeping the Warriors from that is their inconsistencies in those clutch games and a couple of mistakes here and there. And how do things change in those very specific moments? One missed shot, one turnover, one missed free throw. It comes down to every single possession. And how many possessions would have been impacted if Steph Curry played three more minutes tonight? I think like six, seven, eight possessions are changed. And maybe that's the difference between a loss in Minnesota and a win tonight. I don't know. It's just how I feel. And again, I I got to couch all of this by saying this whole conversation it is entirely unfair to Stephen Curry there is no 36 year old in this league and and LeBron is the the biggest similar discussion similar situation although Anthony Davis when he's full and right I think is their best overall player There is no other 36-year-old in the NBA who is asked to carry as much of the load as Steph Curry is on a night-in and night-out basis. And on that point, I agree with Steve Kerr 100 million percent. There is no doubt about it. The Warriors, specifically the last three years, even four years, the last four years, the Warriors have asked Stephen Curry to just simply do too much. Now, his greatness two years ago and chipping in from a lot of others on the roster were a big reason why you won the championship. 
But more often than not, when you are asking a singular player who is aging out of their prime to carry more and more and more of the load and shoulder more and more and more of the burden, these are the kinds of results you're going to get. So I get Steve Kerr wanting to try to find as many resting minutes for Steph Curry as possible. I get that. Which is why against Memphis four days ago, when he won by 20, guess what? He did not play hardly at all in the fourth quarter. But in a game like tonight, when you have so much on the line, you gotta you you gotta put him in there for a little bit more. You got to try everything you can to win this basketball game. 888-957-9570. That's the number to call. Let's go back out to the phone lines. Kurt is in Oakland. He wants to join the show. Kurt, what's up? You're on with Mark Randy on 957 the game. How you doing? Hey Mark. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, my number one thing is, yes, you know, Steph needs the rest when he gets the chance, you know, to keep him fresh. And so, you know, Steve Kerr will ride the bench as much as he can to try to hope that they can keep a lead so that Curry doesn't have to rush back in. My other problem is this, though. Jonathan Kaminga and all of his yelling when he drives to the lane to try to get a call. And then he doesn't get the call. He stops. He looks at the official. He pouts. He doesn't run back on defense, and usually it's his man that's making a wide-open three. He needs to stop doing that, pay attention, and run back on defense. I want somebody to count how many times you hear him on the TV going, ah, when he drives to the lane trying to get a call, and then he doesn't get any pouts. It's getting ridiculous. I get he might be getting fouled, but he needs to quit doing that, run back on defense, and help out. It's just it's sad. And then he gets frustrated with that. So then the problem is, is now he's taking himself out of the game because teams know they could frustrate him. And so then he's going to go complain. And then they're wide open again. And it's just, it's getting annoying. He's a talented player, but he yells too much. Put your head down. If you don't get the call, get back on defense and help out or try to fight for the ball. If you miss the ball, go pogo stick back up and get the ball. But he doesn't even do that. He wants to look at the official while the play's still going on. It's getting out of hand. I get it. He's young, but he needs to stop doing that. He's not that level yet. And if he wants to be the next superstar for the Warriors or one of them, he needs to stop doing that, put his head down, put in the work, expect to not get the call, and fight for his ball when he, get, when he doesn't get the shot off. But it's just getting annoying. And I swear, he did it at least six times in the second half alone. That's why he wasn't playing towards the end, because he was frustrated. And they had to put GP2 in. Well, maybe if Kaminga stopped doing that, they would have had him in the game and he would have made that layup instead of GP2 missing it. We don't know. But he was out of the game because he was kept getting frustrated and the Timberwolves knew it and they were laughing and he was getting even more frustrated. But yeah, he needs to stop doing that. And somebody needs to record how many times he goes, whoa, when he drives to the lane. Thanks for taking the call. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Appreciate it. I, I noticed it a couple of times uh, in this game. Uh, where Kaminga was was searching for a call, didn't get it, and, and maybe didn't immediately turn back the other way. Uh, there's no denying that the last two games have not been Kaminga's best. I thought he was better tonight, and, and by a pretty decent margin, than he was on Friday in the loss to the Pacers. Kaminga finished with 14 points, 6 of 11 shooting, did not settle for a single three, did not take one, three rebounds, a couple of assists, had two turnovers, uh, had a seal, had a block shot as well. Kaminga was fine today, but similar to the, the conversation about Steph Curry when we're talking about the standard that he's set, Kaminga is at a point now where he has set a, a pretty good standard for himself. Uh, and the last two games, he has not reached it. He was closer tonight than he was the last two games, but tonight wasn't his his best game by, by far. But he was not bad. Uh, he was not like top of my list for reasons the Warriors lost this game tonight. Um, but you're right. He, he did not close. The Warriors went elsewhere for the closing lineup. He still played 30 minutes. He played more than Stephen Curry. He played, let's see, uh, 12 more seconds than Stephen Curry tonight did Jonathan Kaminga. I'm still not at a point where I'm concerned uh, by Kaminga at all. Uh, maybe two subpar games, if you want to call tonight subpar, probably was, not by a wide margin, but probably a little bit subpar for the, the reputation that he's earned now. Um, but th the sample size is large enough for me, at least in my opinion, that I'm not going to overreact to, uh, to to these two games from Kaminga. He's still an extremely important piece on this team, and for my money, he is 
the Warriors' most valuable piece moving forward, not named Stephen Curry. Uh, because Jonathan Kaminga has the the mix of youth at 21 years old and ability, and he's the the young guy that has shown his ability the most and the most consistently uh, out of the bunch. So I'm not worried about Jonathan Kaminga, uh, but I think Kurt is right that specifically the last two games, it's been a little bit uneven from Kaminga, um, but he was not, again, number one, number two, number three reasons why the Warriors lost this game tonight. All right. Warriors Live continues here on 95.7 The Game. You are listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM in HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. I want to hear from Steph Curry, and we are going to in just a minute. But first, let's run through what happened in the final couple of minutes because Kurt did bring up that Gary Payton the second missed layup, and maybe the, the, the tenor the tone of this postgame show is entirely different if GP2 makes that layup, but let's just run through what happened in the final two minutes. Uh, I get First of all, I should say, uh, the Warriors happened to tie it up as a result of a Steph Curry made three after he missed one, and Trace Jackson, or pardon me, GP2 got the offensive rebound and found Steph again for a reload. That tied the game up. But ultimately... The Warriors down one with two minutes left. They have the ball. GP2 misses a layup. It was, he's kind of was gliding in the air past or around a defender. It wasn't the easiest, most wide open layup of all time, but it's, it's one he should make. He misses that. So you're still down by one. Then McDaniels uh, hits a mid range jumper over GP2, very well defended. It bounces high off front rim and then goes three. Uh, goes through. So now it's a three-point deficit, less than two minutes to go. Then Steph on the other end maybe forces a right wing three, really tough shot, missed it, still down by three. Then Gobert on a pick and roll, catches the ball, rolls to the hoop, gets fouled, makes two free throws. Suddenly it's a five-point deficit, one minute, three seconds to go. Steph Curry drives, gets fouled, makes both free throws, back down by three. Warriors get bailed out by an Anthony Edwards airballed three. And Chris Finch on the sideline, the head coach of the T-Wolves, did not look happy. And then the Warriors, with uh, about like 30 seconds left, they go for the quick two. Curry gets a lay-in, down by one with 15 seconds left. Edwards gets fouled, he makes both free throws. Deficit is three, 11.9 to go. And then the Warriors call an inbound play from the side. Uh, Steph Curry sets a pin down screen for Clay as the ball gets inbounded to the right wing. Clay uses that Steph screen to cut to the left wing. Doesn't really get a ton of separation uh, from slow mo. Kyle Anderson misses the three uh, rebounds to Edwards. He splits a pair. It's a four point deficit in the final seconds. Ball game over. So also some uh, issues for the Warriors, even when Steph Curry's on the floor. Uh, you had the missed layup by GP2. You had maybe a force three by Stephen Curry, and you had Clay Thompson. I don't really blame Clay for taking that shot because it was what the play was called and drawn up in the huddle, but it was not the best look, and there was still plenty of time to maybe get a different look. Um, but I, I think that's an important perspective that we have to have when having this conversation about Steph Curry's minutes and the rotations. Uh, because there were also some issues even when Steph Curry was on the floor. I mean, it's not like it was Warriors outscore the T-Wolves by 15 with with Steph, and they get outscored by 20 without him. Like, it wasn't that drastic. For the most part, the game was close and competitive the whole way. The Warriors built a 12-point lead at one point. And by the way, if you want to know an upsetting stat, this is the Warriors' 13th loss this year when leading by 12 or more points. That is tied for the most in the NBA with... The San Antonio Spurs, one of the worst teams in the entire league. The Warriors have tied for the most with the Spurs, the most losses this year when leading by 12 or more points. Tonight was the 13th such loss for the Warriors tonight. So it wasn't perfect even when Steph was on the floor. But when this game turned early fourth, Steph was not. And sometimes this is a simple game, and I thought that was the simple place to point to tonight. Uh, speaking of Steph, let's hear from the man himself. Steph Curry post game after this Warriors loss, 114 to 110 to the T Wolves. Here is Warriors 36 year old point guard Steph Curry post game tonight. Were you surprised how long you rested in the fourth? I mean, obviously, you're comparing it to the last game and the manure rotation. Like, I want to play as many minutes as 
as I'm fresh and able to. So a little bit, knowing that they were just going on a run. Um, it was the lead was kind of wailing away. So, you know, we played the whole fourth quarter in India against Indiana. Didn't work out. This didn't work out. So we got to find somewhere in the middle. Uh, you know, Steve has mentioned wanting to, to keep you around 30 to 32 with, you know, how compact the schedule is and really said how much a bur of a burden you've had the last 15 years, really, with this franchise. I mean, I know it's a conversation we've, we've had plenty, but I mean, can you only play 30 to 32 right now, considering what's at stake? The uh, situation will define itself pretty clearly, and it is in, in kind of real time. So every game matters. You know, we're inching closer to the other end of the standings that we never thought we'd be in. So nobody's going to wave the white flag and say, you know, you're you're mailing it in. And if that means playing more minutes, then I'll be ready to do that. Kind of alluding to it now, but and this is a open-ended question, but just like where do you guys kind of go from here as you navigate these last 12 games against some tough opponents and opponents who are also in this play-in playoff race? Same answer we've had where you got to try to beat Miami. We got embarrassed against Indiana and didn't play hard, weren't connected with like effort and focus. Tonight we competed. They just made more shots than we did, made enough plays, got the crowd back into it at the beginning of our fourth quarter. But we responded well with what we didn't do well against Indiana. Still got nothing to show for it. So can we do that again in Miami and play 48, you know, solid minutes to the NBA is such a weird league. It just takes one little spark to get yourself going. Every team goes through it in the season. You see what Houston's doing right now. They got one little spark and they run off whatever it is, eight, nine in a row. So we're capable of doing it until we run out of games. That's the mindset. You kind of alluded to it there, but how, how tough was it the Pacers film to watch? As, as a player, you, you know when you're messing up and making mistakes and there's a lack of focus. And then you go watch the film and it's 10 times worse. Um, that's what it kind of felt like where every little play, we were one step behind every, I guess, possession that could have kept the lead a certain or kept the momentum on our side or, you know, forced them to think about us a little bit. We literally is play after play after play after play. So it is difficult to watch it and know you let one slip tonight. Like I said, I'm sure the film will look a lot better. Still a loss. So I think that honestly just speaks to you know our pride and our ability to come out and want to play hard knowing we've had a, a tough go as of late. That's Steph Curry postgame in Minnesota tonight. Uh, first question he was asked, Anthony Slater of The Athletic, our 95-7 The Game Warriors insider, were you surprised how long you sat spanning the end of the third and the beginning of the fourth quarter? It was kind of a long answer for Steph, but ultimately he said a little bit. He was a little bit surprised how long he sat. He mentioned what happened against Indiana on Friday. He played the entire fourth quarter, and it did not work. Uh, he played only the final seven minutes of the fourth quarter tonight after sitting nine minutes and 13 seconds, spanning the end of the third and the beginning of the fourth, and that did not work. And Steph said, maybe we got to find some sort of middle ground. The middle ground tonight was relatively simple. After the beginning of the fourth quarter, which was a run for Minnesota, 12-5 to five over the first three minutes and four seconds, Steve Kerr calls timeout with eight minutes and 56 seconds left in the fourth. Suddenly, your three-point lead is gone. You're down by four. That's the middle ground. Bring Steph in there with about nine minutes to go in the fourth. Play him the final nine. That would be two more minutes than he ended up playing. He'd be finishing with 31-51, about 32 minutes instead of 30. Is it that big of a difference? Is two more minutes going to be the difference in, in Steph being terribly fresh or terribly fatigued? What would you rather have happen? And I know this, this is probably a little bit unfair of me to say. If I could say Steph Curry, let's even bump it up. Steph Curry plays 34 minutes tonight and the Warriors win, or Steph Curry plays 30 minutes tonight and the Warriors lose. What's more worth it? Ideally, you, he plays 30 and you win. And I know hindsight is 2020, but in a night like tonight, when you had an opportunity to beat one of the best teams in the NBA on the road, you're up by three going into the fourth, you got to ride your horses. And your horse at this point is a 36-year-old Steph Curry. Steph Curry admitting a little bit surprised how long he sat to begin the fourth quarter. And really, it was the end of the third and the beginning of the fourth. 
He sat the final 407 of the third and the first 654. Or pardon me, in the first 506. He came in at 654 left in the fourth. The first 506 of the fourth, a combined nine minutes and 13 seconds on the bench for Steph Curry, spanning the third and the fourth quarters. During that stretch, the Warriors got outscored by 12, 32 to 20. 32 to 20, T Wolves advantage over the 9 13 while Steph was on the bench. A four point lead turns into an eight point deficit. Steph Curry comes back in, and while there were some issues down the stretch, we we talked through the final two minutes, some issues. Steph Curry included. I thought he forced a right wing three when he did not have to. Uh, The Warriors were better all night long when Steph Curry was on the floor than, than when he wasn't. It's an unfair burden on Steph, as Steve Kerr has talked about. But he's your best chance to win this ball game tonight. And uh, without him during that stretch, that's when you lost the game. There were not a ton of big runs in this game. There were not. This was nip and tuck back and forth. Warriors ultimately built that 12-point lead at one point, but it was close. It was competitive the whole way. No one really got that big of a lead. And, and when you did push it to 8, 9, 10, the T-Wolves would respond and get it back down to 4. This was a close game throughout. The one major run was for the T-Wolves to begin the fourth quarter. They began the fourth quarter with a 12-5 run, then a timeout, a couple of subs, but not Steph, a 7-3 run, a combined 19-8 run over the first five-plus minutes of the fourth. It turned a three-point deficit into an eight, or a three-point lead for the Warriors into an eight-point deficit. And then you're, you're trying to come back by eight over the final seven minutes, certainly doable but tough, and you couldn't quite get the job done. And the Warriors fall 114 to 110. Okay, a few minutes left of Warriors wrap up here on 95 7 the game. Let's run through uh, the scores. I guess there's really only one that is important. A minute before halftime in LA, the Pacers and Lakers doing battle, and the Lakers have taken the lead. The Lakers lead the Pacers by two points, a minute to go before halftime. Let's just, for the sake of figuring out the standings, Let's say the Lakers win that game. They would improve to 39 and 32. The Warriors are 36 and 34. If the Lakers win and do get their 39th win, they would be two and a half games ahead of the Lakers with 12 Warrior games left. If they lose, they would fall to 38 and 33, and they would be a game and a half ahead of the Warriors with still those 12 remaining games for the Warriors. The Warriors' loss, though, is indeed final, as we know, 36 and 34, which means they are going into Monday morning only a game ahead of the Houston Rockets for the 10th and final spot in the Western Conference postseason. I know the play and not technically the playoffs, uh, but the final play in spot is that 10th seed, and the Warriors are only one game ahead of the Rockets for that spot, who are red hot. Winners of eight in a row. They won yesterday versus Utah, scoring 147 points. And they've got Portland tomorrow, tip off at five in Houston. Uh, So Portland, another bad team, the second worst record in the Western Conference. If that's another Houston win, by the time the Warriors play next, which is in Miami on Tuesday, if Houston beats Portland tomorrow as they will be favored to do so. If that happens, when the Warriors suit up in Miami on Tuesday, there will only be a half game difference between the Warriors and the Rockets. That is if the Rockets beat the Blazers tomorrow. All right, a couple minutes left here on Warriors wrap up. Let's uh, quickly sneak in our last caller of the night. Uh, D in DC wants to chime in. D, what's up? You're on Warriors wrap up on 95 7 the game. How you doing, D? Brother man, what's going on with you? Uh, trying to make sense of this loss tonight, D. So I mean, I'm about to make a statement that's going to piss off a lot of people at 95.7, as well as some of the fans at San Francisco. Kerr is deliberately sabotaging Steph Curry's um, career right now. You cannot tell me when we need to win the games that's when you decide you want to sit Steph out until the six minutes mark. That is some BS. Kerr is deliberately throwing games away. I don't know why he's doing that specifically after signing a two-year extension. That is ridiculous, and it is coaching malpractice. Kerr 
needs to be reprimanded at the highest level, if possible, he needs to be removed from his position. I'm grateful for the fact that he guided this team to four years or four championships or whatever. But let's be let's not be let's not let's not let's not, let's, let's not be uh, 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 stupid by saying that Kerr is the reason that we won four championships. Okay, um, it is very evident ever since two years ago, once Mike Brown left this organization, Kerr has been struggling, struggling as a head coach, and things have to change moving forward. Going into next year, the ownership needs to make it a point to revamp the coaching staff. Kerr needs better staff uh, staff members next to him to help him be be the greatest as he, as he can be. Um, again, I'm grateful for what he's done for 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 the four championships, but it, it is it is inconceivable to me that a head coach would leave a Steph Curry on the bench until the six minute mark when we're down by three points and not even think about bringing him back in, specifically when we know for a fact that Kerr always brings Steph in at the eight-minute mark. But anyways, I'll leave it like that. I'm just very frustrated right now. But to me, this loss is on Steph, uh, is on uh, Steve Kerr. And that's this 18th game that he's lost this season, by the way. 18th. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Appreciate the call. I'm not sure I go as far as you. I don't think this was purposeful sabotage by Steve Kerr. Probably just a miscalculation. Uh, and, and maybe the Warriors internally feel like all right the season is for not let's not let's not try to risk something we don't have to if we feel like this season is is going to come uh turn into nothing why risk but i would not go as far as ud i do appreciate the call and, and love hearing from you here on warriors wrap up i don't think this was a purposeful sabotage uh that is a a pretty big accusation and i don't think that that's what it was i think just uh, an unfortunate time for the Warriors to decide uh, we got to stop writing Stephen Curry. I think it's as simple as that. Unfortunate that this was the time that they decided to do it. The only time Steph had played this number of minutes or less this year. Blowout wins, blowout losses, games in which he sustained an injury, or games w- in which Steph and the starting group was not playing well, and Steve said, for the betterment of our team tonight, I'm benching you guys. Those are the only instances where Steph played the same or fewer minutes as he did tonight. Tonight fits none of those descriptions. He did not get hurt. This was not a blowout win or a loss. And Steph Curry was not playing poorly. He was your best player all night long. Got to get him more minutes. It's as simple as that for me. All right. I got to wrap things up here in just a minute. First, though, it's time for our hardest worker of the game which is brought to you by the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, who works hard to serve the community. Are you looking for a career in law enforcement? Learn more about job opportunities at joinacso.com. Um, I guess to uh, put a bow on top of everything that we've been talking about, I almost feel obligated to pick Stephen Curry for our hardest worker of the game because he was clearly the Warriors' best player tonight, 31 points, 9 for 21 from the field, a little bit of a volume score tonight, but some of that was him hoisting down the stretch uh, when the Warriors were trailing. 5 of 11 from downtown, so really good efficiency from deep for Steph. Uh, Also had four rebounds, three assists, two turnovers, uh, and was a plus six in his 30 minutes just about where the Warriors lost by four. He is our hardest worker of the game. Again, brought to you by the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. I think Draymond Green deserves a shout. He was really good in this game. 12 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. He was actually plus 8, which was tied for a uh, a team best. Gary Payton was quietly a plus 8. Good to see because GP2 has largely been ineffective recently. He only scored 2 points in his 23 and a half minutes, but had 8 rebounds and 7 assists. For GP2 tonight, now he will be remembered for missing that layup that would have given the Warriors a lead with two minutes left. Um, but he was he was good, and good to see him impact winning, uh, at least making winning plays on the basketball court more often than not. Had some offensive rebounds that led to uh, second-chance points. One of them was the Steph 3 that tied the game late. Uh, GP2 was good, so he deserves a shout-out as well, uh, as does Draymond Green, but it is Steph Curry that is our hardest worker of the game. 
All right, that'll do it for Warriors wrap-up tonight here on 95.7 The Game. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks to all of our callers. The interaction on the YouTube chat, as always, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. For Chris O'Connell and Sterling Bennett behind the glass, my name is Mark Granny signing off. Thanks so much for tuning in. You do not want to miss uh, tomorrow here on 95.7 The Game. I'm sure there'll be a lot more of conversations about this Warriors last tonight, beginning with Spadoni uh, at 5 in the morning, then the morning roast, Bonte and Shasky at 6, and uh, Steiny and Gu and Willard and Dibs to follow. Should be a fun day after a disappointing Warriors loss tonight here on 95.7 The Game. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, and have a great rest of your Sunday evening. Planning for spring at Lowe's means